Hello, everyone, and welcome. That's the wrong fucking thing. Welcome back to <laughs> Dropped Frames. Little, we're, every week, we add in one more little thing of production. So now, not only... I think I filled every scene up in XSplit, uh, because we're doing the first part of the show with three of us, the second part of the show with four of us, so it's got... Anyways, I don't know why I'm not doing this again. Uh, no, hi, I'm hello, like, welcome to the like show. Like kick it when you like open the show. What? I want to be like, all right, this is Zeke Third. We're gonna laugh from C two E two. Yeah, is yeah. that ingrained in your head? Well, it's. I mean, like you get you get kind of used to just puking at the mouth when someone like says, "All right, let's go." It's true. That's true. No. <laughs> uh, well, we get to talk about. I, I think this is gonna be an interesting show because uh, I haven't really played anything new. Zeke was in Chicago the entire time and hasn't streamed since last week. And co has been playing pretty much The Witcher. So <laughs> that's pretty much going to be what we're talking about here at the start of the show. And then in the later half, we're going to be bringing on Omid and talking a little bit about what he's doing uh, on Twitch, that's which good. is something that uh, is rather unique. And I think a lot of people will be interested to hear what he has to say because I know a lot of, I think all three of us are very interested to see what he has to say. Uh, so that'll be the second half, probably about an hour, an hour and a half from now. Uh, but let's start off talking about what we've been doing, not really what we've been streaming. Zeke, you were in Chicago. It's... Wait, did you get a haircut? Yes, I got a haircut, yeah. Man, you look so good. I haven't showered or <laughs> anything. I'm not even wearing pants right now because they're in the dryer, so. And that, is that bad? I mean, no, I'm, that... ju I'm just saying, like, this is the most, Strike. in terms of being physically prepared for the show, this is the, the least physically prepared. There you go. There, I'm not showing my knee. I'm not that. I'm not wearing pants either. I'm not that scandalous. I'm not that <laughs> scandalous. Uh, yes, I did get a haircut. I did get a haircut. Well, it, it, thank you for noticing, Zeke. It means a lot her. to me. Tip her. There, yes. Tip her or him, whoever. I do. I do. <clears throat> we, we anyway, sorry, you were saying? Uh, Chicago. What the fuck were you doing up there? Also, was it cold oh. in Chicago? No, well, the, there was a couple of days where it was rainy, but like honestly, it's perfect weather for for this Montana boy. Mm. It was a little bit chilly. Sun was shining. Wind was blowing. It was jacket weather, which is my favorite kind of weather. Like right around fifty-five. Uh, okay, to not 65. too bad. Oh, I loved it. It's not too bad. Yeah, because Stephen's been saying it's been snowing in Montreal recently, as of like last week. I think is when he was mentioning that. So that's why I was yeah. asking if it was snowing up there or anything. Nope, uh, just a little bit of rain. But the last two days were just glorious. Nice. So what? What the fuck were you in Chicago for, man? Where you uh, I was in Chicago for uh, C2E2, which is basically the Chicago Comic Con. It's like, I think the third biggest one, it's like San Diego, New York, and then Chicago. Um, but uh, the Chicago Comic Con, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just comic book conventions and people who like it. A lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of writers, artists, cosplayers, which was, oh my God, I've never been to a Comic Con. I've been to like a, a few PAXs and stuff, and there's like light cosplay. Yeah, it's like light cosplay, yeah. But at a Comic Con, oh my God! Every lot? like five seconds, I was turning around, going, either a that is an amazingly like accurate uh, costume, yeah. B, uh, my God, whoever is in that costume is hot, hot, and I want to you know <laughs> violate terms of service. Um, and uh, <laughs> third, you get the you get the ones that are awesome, but only because they are so. So bad. horribly cheaply made. Yeah, it's like like the cardboard cosmos. So like, with they didn't get good enough paint to paint over like what's underneath the cardboard. So it's like you got a, like a, an Autobot that has you can see like Budweiser <laughs> underneath. The thing. With with that in mind, uh, please give us your best of those three categories that you've now just made. Um. Okay. Let's see. The first. Uh. Let's see. As far as like the most uh, intricate and the one that I like that I like yeah. personally the most. Yeah. Um, oh, they, see, it's tough because there's to, there's I'm, they split it up into different categories when they do the actual the, like the actual uh, costume uh, contest. Oh, did you guys stream that? Did you? Did yeah, you... a little bit. Oh. Like we the finalists, we stream like the the five finalists from all the categories. The thing is, like some of the best costumes didn't enter the contest; they were just uh, there. Oh, they're just there hanging uh, out. But like a lot of them were really really cool and really accurate. Um. But I would have to say the one that comes to comes to mind, the first one I noticed, I went, oh, my God. It was the entire, like, main cast of Spaceballs. Oh, really? Had, oh, I think had, I saw your tw your, nice. your tweet of that. Yes, they had, like, a, they had like a barf, and he was, he was a John Candy-sized dude, which was, you know, a bonus. <laughs> they had a Lone Star guy who looked like Lone Star, and then they had the guys with the, the pick. And, yeah, let's see if I can uh, find this real quick. Yeah, they had the guys with the pick, and the, on the pick it said, we ain't found shit, which was <laughs> fucking hilarious. Um, uh, but yeah, the whole cast of, of, uh, 
of uh, space balls. Um, what was another one? Oh, a space marine. He had this like From Warhammer forty k. Yeah, he had this foam rubber forty k space marine outfit. He was like nine feet tall in this thing, and yeah, there it is, right there. Yeah, that it was kind of a uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't post there because there was a one where they're actually all posing. I haven't posted that one yet. Uh, there's a lot of pictures that I haven't posted. Um, another one that was really, really cool was this dude was dressed up like Fry from Futurama. Yeah. And he looked just like Fry would in like real life. Also, he was, I said, can you do the, can you do the meme face? And he's like, you mean this one? And he goes, <laughs> you know that, you know the meme <laughs> yeah, face? Yeah, the like, perfect. I'm not the perfect sure one. if blah. Yeah. And he did that, took a picture. It was fucking perfect. That's awesome. Um, sexy. How did he do his thing? hair? How did he, the fry guy he dyed it orange and he and he like did the it little was, it was super like spiked. glue. Oh yeah, like okay. wasn't a wig. He like Dude, took you his should, hair. You should post. I bet you if you post like him squinting and it looks identical, that would become like the new Reddit meme or the yeah the new meme to replace the cartoon version of it. That could be. You could, very well. You could, could be. be. You could be famous, Zeke. Let me tell you, I mean, a lot of like, people are gonna want to check out. That. Well, the dude is. The dude was also like Fry's age, like like early twenties, right? Yeah. 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 Totally, totally, like, nailed it. Um, the other one, oh, the sexiest one, I saw this oh, unbelievably good-looking girl dressed a woman, I guess. Uh, she's like, I would, I, I want to say she was like 5'11", and she dressed up like Psylocke from Ooh. the X-Men, or for like, X-something. Like the, the proper Psylocke outfit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, <laughs> that was one of those things where I was like, do, 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 walk my, that's cool, and that's cool. And then I stopped dead in my tracks, and I went, <laughs> oh, oh. And I sat there and just, like, Homer Simpson did. It was like, oh, oh, oh. There, <laughs> I would assume there's probably a lot of tape involved in that. Outfit. Oh, there's tons. There's, there's got to be a lot of tape everywhere. Behind the scenes, like, yeah. augmentation, I'm sure. But, yeah, that that was the one that sticks out in my mind. And then there there was, okay. Third category wasn't uh, doesn't really fit it, but because it was really really well done. But there were two guys who were dressed up like I don't know I want to say like knights or samurais or something, but they had like <laughs> scale mail armor. But it was all like a uh, 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 beer uh, carton, beer cardboard, and they had like cut it out so it looked like perfect. Oh. But it was like the, one That's was a, cool. a Tecate, right? The Tecate beer. The Tecate knight. Yeah, he had like like scale mail Tecate like from head to toe. Must That's have taken crazy. like a hundred hours to put this costume together. But he looked like a knight, but everything on him was like Tecate beer. What and the, his butt, I think had like uh, Keystone or something. The Keystone Knight. That's awesome. Yeah, these two guys were walking around. It was hilarious. What were their weapons made out of? The same thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They were just like like folded cardboard <laughs> all the way up the sword. That's weird. That was awesome. That's pretty cool though. It's pretty cool. Did you get pictures of those guys as well? I was gonna show up on Twitter. I did eventually. not. I was on my. I was on my way uh, back to the stage. Gotcha. Um. So I didn't. I didn't actually have time to sn to stop and snap a picture. But I looked at him. Like, oh my god, that's that's amazing. Gotcha. So I saw your interview with uh with Sean Astin, which was hilarious. Yes. Uh. Not. Not. Well. I don't even know how to where to begin with that interview because it was just. There was a point where he was just tell he was basically being like Soma, don't fucking talk to me. Like, do not talk to me, Soma. No, no. I gotta focus on this. He I gotta was, focus on this game. He wanted to play the goddamn game. It was crazy. Like yeah. most people, like are up there, like trying to talk, and they're barely playing. He really wanted to play the fucking game and win and figure out how to do it. And Soma kept like trying to ask him interview questions, and he was like, "No, just don't, don't talk to me right now." Can you? Not yeah, talk to me like now? that was a word verbatim or words that came out of his mouth verbatim was like, "Don't talk to me right now." Yep. Yep. <laughs> he was. He receptive was. Yeah. What's that? I said a receptive interview. Yeah, he was so cool about it, too, because we had talked about it. And, you know, he's a big star. He's done lots and lots of shit. Um, and we talked about it before. And, like, let's not, like, really bring up Goonies or, you know, Lord of the Rings and shit like that. Because I'm sure he's, you know, talked ad nauseum about it. Yeah. So we went through his Wikipedia and picked one, like, we're like, we got to pick a movie that no one, he, no one talks to him about. So we went through it and we saw this cover of him with, like, a gun in front of this ski mountain. And it was called Icebreaker. And it was him, like he was Whoa. a ski patrol guy who foiled a nuclear plot on his resort. <laughs> what? I know it was, was this like post 90s, like Rudy like, and Goonies. Like how old was this? It was like not, I don't know. I want to say like two thousand. 
I've never heard of this. That, yeah, no, no one has. That's the best part. So we're like, <laughs> you no, know, you've been in all kinds of things, blah, 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 blah. But uh, the one we really want to ask you about is Icebreaker. You know, can you tell us how? And we just like tried to go off and he didn't skip a fucking beat That's awesome. the whole time. Didn't even phase him. We, and he just played along and he went, oh, yeah, Icebreaker, man. That was a tough role for me. And he just kept going on about it. And then he told a story about Peter Jackson coming up to him. He goes, yeah. Uh, so Sean, and in, you know, in his Australian, New Zealand accent, is, uh, so Sean, um, icebreaker. <laughs> and like, that's how he st- like, started the conversation with Peter. That's how Peter Jackson started it. Jesus. It was great, but he was fucking, he was a bro. He was a bro. Yeah, he, he seemed really cool he, in the like, interview. Yeah, he was, he was really cool. And it seemed like he was actually, you know, a lot of times when you do stuff like that, they're just like, you're saying they're so disinterested in the game. He was like really getting into it and like asking you questions. And like at the beginning of it, you were like kind of like fucking with them. And towards yeah. the end, you had to actually start trying <laughs> because he was going to start beating you over. There was over. a there was a part where he did like six in a row where he where I, I was like, all right, I'm going to stab you now. He go, foot. And yeah. I was like, no, I'm gonna, and then he kicked me. And then he like, he like did it like six times in a row. I was like, now, now, wait a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. I can't let this happen. It was good. Wow. Apparently yeah. that movie has Bruce Campbell in it. I've never it heard does. of that. It does. He plays, he plays Krieg, the bad guy. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen it, but I saw the, I saw the wiki page. Uh, well, I think that interview is up on twitch.tv slash twitch VODs. Yes. I don't think they've been uh, spliced apart or anything, so you're going to have to dig a little bit for it. Uh, but you can definitely yep. check it out. Yep. Was, was there anyone else that you interviewed that was kind of like a highlight for you? Um, well, of course, I'm a huge Mystery Science Theater fan, so meeting Joel and Trace was, like, I felt bad, because they brought up five people for that other space, because that's what they were there for. They right. brought up, like, five people, and all I wanted was Joel and Trace, <laughs> so I felt bad for Paul Feig, who's this huge director, writer, producer guy, like, what, he, like, uh, wedding, or not wedding crush, excuse me, Bridesmaids, um, he's directing the new, uh, uh Ghostbusters movie that's gonna have an all-female cast. Oh, is he? I didn't know that was yep. they had yep. chosen a director yet. Uh, wait, maybe he's writing it. I don't know. He's writing or directing. I can't remember. But like, he's this huge name, and I was like, eh, I want to talk to Paul, or I want to talk to uh, Joel and Trace. Uh, and I met because I, I was wearing the I was that douchebag who wore the shirt to the concert. Yeah. Nice. Like I unzipped, <laughs> I unzipped my hoodie and I showed him. I was like, I got my Chief McCloud shirt on. Nice. And they were, and both of them they they recognized it immediately. They're like, oh, that's great, you know. And they're exactly what you want. And the other two people that were actually cast to do the show, I had to stop in the middle, like, after one question, be like, sorry, I don't mean to ignore you two. <laughs> but, uh, so, how'd you get cast? That's nice. All right, Joel, Trace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, how yeah, many no, people were on that interview? Because there was five. five of them, and then you and someone else, or just you? Nope. Just five of them and me. We were actually oh, damn. supposed to happen. Was It was supposed to just be Joel, Trace, and Paul. That was it. Yeah, that was yeah. All scheduled for, it. and then it was going to be three other people. Was going to be or two other people. Was going to be me. Uh, it was going to be Jordan, uh, Soma, and uh, DJ Wheat. We're supposed to sit on the couch with them and play FTL, hmm. which uh, did not happen, thankfully, because mo- when you have, I mean, that many people. Yeah, really it's kind of uh, an interview in general with that many people is rough to begin with. So yeah, throwing, throwing was, a game in there to play is just like m- the biggest clusterfuck ever. Yeah, That's and there a was lot some. Going on. Yeah, there were some games that, or some interviews that were also supposed to play games that we didn't to do. Uh, another highlight of it. Well, was did me. you report? Did you report them? Report what? Twit the channel. Did you report the channel and get them banned? Because on gaming content. For non gaming content. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do in that situation. Speaking of that, well, well you know what? Mm, <laughs> that's that's mm, for another episode. Mm, that's for another episode. <laughs> which I did. Uh, um, do what I said I did, JP, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll we'll see it. what happens. We'll see what happens. Cool. But uh, no, Ming Chen was was another like he was probably uh, my favorite interview because dude, d- dude, just like he's a nerd. He loves talking comic books. Yeah. Um, he just uh, just recently got like super famous. I mean, well, not super famous, but you know, he's on cable television. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he was awesome to talk to you, man. He was, we like nerded out about the new preacher stuff that's coming out about, uh, um, the new, uh, the new Joker, which, you know, was very polarizing. Yeah, I guess that hit when you were there, right? It did. It totally did. Fucking the internet went ape shit. It was yep. just like, who cares about mods right now? Let's talk about the fucking Joker all night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Steam was sitting there just like, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Gabe probably paid them to release that so they could get off his fucking back for a couple hours. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I forgot that launch. So, were people talking about, like, 
I, I would think if there was a place in the world where like a shit ton of people would be talking about that at the bars that evening, it would be there. Was that a major? I don't know why I care about this, but was that a major no, no. point of contention there? It was not. And you know why? Because it's it was like eight hours of comic book, nothing but comic book stuff all day. When you got out of there, You're just it, like, was, fuck. it was more just like, you know, drinking and, and uh, you know, doing what you do at, at, at a bar when you gotcha. have a beer can, <laughs> you know. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> did you get any good, like, Chicago things? Like, did you get a deep dish pizza or anything like that? Uh, not this time. I've actually been to Chicago before, so I did, I did all that my first time there. I did, like, the Chicago dogs, and I did, like, uh, deep dish pizza and stuff. This time, this time I just kind of... Hung out kinda, at the hotel. Yeah, just kind of stay close between, um, you know, the hotel and, like, other, you yeah. know, places around there. That's something I, I think a lot of people... I've been doing st stuff like this for four or five years, and it, people are always like, oh, you get to go to blah, 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 and hang out. It's like, yeah, I get to go to the fucking hotel walk mm -hmm. to the convention center and then walk back to the hotel and that's it like that is what <laughs> that is what i will see of that city uh, yep. it, it's not like a vacation where it, most of the time if you're gonna do something like that you'll stay an extra day and see the city yeah yeah, yeah. most people just don't do that well yeah and i i'd already been there before so i was there i was actually there for uh the wrigley 100th anniversary go cubbies i see but i, see. I did all i did all that touristy shit um the first time i was there this time it was it was straight up work like gotcha. i got up went to the convention, looked at the schedule, and that's kind of how it works, like, on these kind of uh, interviewee, hosty kind of things. Like, you go, to, you go in the morning, you look at the schedule, you fight over who you want, you kind of take who you don't, because yeah. you got to, because there's, you know, there's, there's going to be people, there's going to be guests there that you don't, you've never heard of. Right. So, um, you kind of do that, and then uh, um, that's kind of what happened from the Mystery Science Theater. It was supposed to be all three of us, and then it ended up there bringing up or excuse me, other space. It ended up there bringing five, and uh, uh, they're like, "Well, who's gonna?" I was like, "Fuck you! Fuck this is mine! <laughs> Fuck off! I will fight you if you don't let me have this." Cool. So, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So it seems like it was a good experience. You're super into it. Oh yeah, man! It's, it was it was awesome, and I also got to meet one of my, like I tweeted this out, um, like I met lots of celebrities and you know that kind of stuff, uh, pro wrestlers and whatnot, but like. I'm I'm a comic book guy, so I I went to the artist alley and I looked at the the list of people who were there and I went <gasps> one of my personal heroes Terry Moore, yeah, who uh, uh, drew, uh, wrote, uh, wrote and drew a comic that I really really like. I went up and I met and I like I didn't I've never fangirled before in my life, but I went up to him and I started like doing like the breath like <gasps> you. Your book is one of my favorite books, and I want to tell you that I really like it. <laughs> like seriously, just fucking almost lost it in front of him, and he's sitting there with his eyes just like getting wider and wider. I was like, "Thank you very much." <laughs> like this thirty-four-year-old bearded. What uh, I I'm the name for whatever reason I can't place the name. What what did he write? Or uh, Terry, uh, he it's it's kind of like a under like a lower key comic called uh, Strangers of Paradise is what he got famous for. He actually wrote and, or he actually produced it himself uh, largely before it got like picked up by a bigger distribution. But um, for those, I mean, it's, it's one of those cult things that like, if you like it, you love it. Yeah. Kind of. And it's soap opera. It's no, no superheroes, no nothing. It's just relationship soap opera uh, comic. Huh. And I, I love it. It, it, it hits me right in the feels. <laughs> cool. Cool. Sounds like it was, uh, was a good trip then. Was well oh, worth yeah. the trip. Oh, absolutely, well worth the trip. Did, uh, did so, you, well, go go ahead, Cole. Uh, quick question, Zeke. Was there anything there uh, gaming related? Yeah, that's, that's what I oh, was talking about. Ton, oh, tons of gaming related stuff. I mean, there's like it, it, the the lines are blurry and getting blurrier between gaming and comics and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, how many comic book characters are in games? now like there's tons of them yeah. like with the like the walking dead telltale games game of Thrones, telltale games marvel heroes is really active still there you go um yeah and all those all those guys were there and oh there was one uh that interview that was really cool with uh um uh, uh chad coleman who plays tyrese who was also coach from left for dead 2 yeah um he was there with uh this guy who they're creating this thing called um uh uh, uh, uh treadwater and treadwater is, is they're try it's a really daunting task, but they're trying to take all the mediums and make them 
under one umbrella. Like they're making a, they're starting, they started with the graphic novel, our comic book. They're making a video game. They showed us little pieces of the video game. And they're going to, they're, they're doing a television series as well. <clears throat> so they're trying to get all of the genres into one, like under the Treadwater umbrella. And I was like, dude, that's going to be kind of crazy. Really difficult. It's- like, and I saw pieces of the game. And I mean, it looks like a regular game. It's in, I mean, it's, there's still like no game yet. I mean, it's, it's in alpha, 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 way alpha. Didn't Defiance try to do that back in, like a year ago? Defiance tried to do a game show parallel kind of deal. But unfortunately, um, in, the, in something like that, balance is extremely important. You don't yeah. want like one to really significantly outweigh the other. And uh, it definitely, there were some, some major issues with the game. And it just could, it didn't keep up with the show. Yeah, I, it, I think my roommate played that. I never played it. I think it, it was had, really fun. It had cool Actually, explosions the first game or something like I that. I ever streamed on Twitch. Really? Yep. Was that, that was like my two, first that game was two years ago, right? Yeah, 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 just over two years ago. Yeah, it was actually the game. Just for the game was really fun, but it's just they they made the game and then they were kind of like, okay, we're done, and they like, it, but it was kind of an MMO, so you can't really do that. There was like tons yeah. of bugs and problems and exploits that just never got addressed, while the show just kept trucking along. So unfortunately, like more people, it was kind of weird. Like a lot of people left the game but kept following the show. It's kind of like when the game is not good enough to even play, and you like the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that should be like that was uh, that was Sci-Fi Network, right? Was that the yeah, Sci-Fi? Yeah. Okay, I, I think sci-fi, it was a now. Sci-Fi Tryon venture. I think they might be doing the same thing with. Uh, well, I mean, on the same channel. I'm not sure if, if it's yeah. going to fire or not, but I think they're optioning it and stuff like that. But uh, that's what I said to the guy when I talked to him. I was like, it sounds like a couple of teenagers like in their basement going like, yeah, we can make a, make a comic book out of it. And we can make it like a TV show and a video game. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. You know? Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly how it happened for him. He's like, that's kind of what happened. Because he, he was with a buddy going like, hey, what if we did this? Oh, I added this and this and this. And the fact that they got like an actual like – celebrity to produce and be a part of it and be a cast member and that kind of stuff. I mean, it speaks to like, you know, the motivation behind it. So I'm hoping, man, the idea sounds good. It's, it's sure. a, you know, pre it's like a, um, uh, like the basic gist is like the, the, the Euro has fallen and the world is going to fall behind it. And it's like the journey to, a, to, you know, post to, to apocalypse basically like to like all society, like falling down and stuff like that. Interesting. Did yeah. that give you any so, sense of like release for that, or is it so, still super early? Oh no, no, I have no idea. Yeah, they okay. they they just had a little booth there set up and like I said, but I don't, I don't I have no idea about the release. Okay. But it's, there's something that we should bring up uh, uh, in a, it, when we have a second. Go ahead. Sorry, Tarko. Oh, I was I was just gonna ask like something that it's always kind of interesting to me about these franchises that try to go multi uh, medium. Did they at all say, are they taking the same story and expressing it in different mediums? Or are they doing like, this part of the story is this game, and then this movie fills in that gap, and then the, the comic is going to be after that? Like, is it going to be serial where you have to go to every medium? Or it's is it going to be like, choose your medium? It's kind of like the Matrix, like how the, they started doing with the Matrix. Like, the Matrix, like, did their movie, then they had a video game, which was a part of it, just a side story of it. Like, a right. complete other part, but it's a side story. And then they had the Animatrix, which wasn't like wasn't released on the screen, but it like had, but but had like. I can't believe they called it the Animatrix. I watched that too, and thinking back, it's like God, what a terrible fucking name that was. It's a terrible name, but dude, that that is a crazy. Like there are some some of those are disturbing. Yeah, like, no, I re- I enjoyed those, that. and you're just kind of like I enjoyed it. I just <laughs> forgot that it was called the Animatrix. Like. Holy fuck, that's so bad. Like, that's so early 2000s. No, dude, How, it I mean, makes itself. When, when, you're sitting, yeah, when you're sitting in a room with other designers and one of them just goes, we could call it the Animatrix. I mean, you could, how at that point. No, I know the it. immediate reaction was like, fuck yeah, that's it. Done. We got yeah. it. <laughs> no, it's the dude that walked in with the donuts and coffee. Like the, the intern was like, why don't you just call it the Animatrix? They're like, what's your name, son? I love it. Perfect. Exactly. Do we have a free quarter office? And then <laughs> they listened to that guy and made the second and third ones. And that's why they were terrible. There you go. It all makes sense. We solved it. Thank, thank you, Zeke. Got figured right. it out. But the point is, that's what it's going to be like. Like there's going to be like stories that matter. Like if you ever watched the like the second Matrix, you see that boy that comes up to Neo is like what is what they say about the life you save. The life right. he saved was in the Animatrix. Like you can see that story played out. And that yeah, yeah. That's that's what it's going to be. 
So it's uh, all the same world. As far as Lots I know. Of different perspectives on the same world kind of thing. That's cool. Yep. No, that's great. I, I really, it's, it makes it really uh, kind of more interesting to go and experience all the different mediums. So that's, that's awesome. And still get new stuff and interesting stuff. Yeah, I think uh, on that same topic, I think Marvel's going to start doing that now with because they just did the, they signed the deal with Telltale last week, and that was announced where they're going to be doing like an adventure game, and I would assume they're going to tie that into the whole universe that they're doing with like the movies and the TV show and the Netflix shit and all that. So if anyone can Next do it better stop. than anyone else, it's Marvel. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Yep, we'll have to see how that goes. And then other companies will see it, and then we'll have a Borderlands MOBA, and we'll have a Dragon Age first person shooter. Don't we already have uh -huh. a Borderlands MOBA? <laughs> It's funny that Borderlands MOBA? No, I don't think so. That Borderlands is Borderlands, and then now they're doing the Telltale thing. And then I think they've actually teased something else, like a new spinoff, but I'm not sure if it's was gone there, anywhere yet. What was... There was some shit... Was it a Witcher MOBA? There was a Witcher... Yes, yes. There's a Witcher MOBA, and there's a Witcher board game. There's the adventure game, which is good. Game yeah, the, yeah, heard, the adventure game's actually pretty, actually pretty cool. I played it with my stream team. We did like a four-player stream team stream on it, and it, it was really cool. Like, yeah. I was pretty surprised. It's very, like all customized. It doesn't resemble any other game I've ever played. Right, yeah, I think uh, Total Biscuit was playing that as well. Uh, Zeke, sorry, we cut you off. You were excited to talk about something. I'm, uh, well, I'm not. I'm excited to hear if you guys saw it and you guys have opinions on it because mm. I watched this thing that I'm about to mention mm. um, after C2E2 was over for the day, was in a hotel room with like six people uh, from Twitch watching this and everybody was hating on it. Oh, I'm Tell excited. me you guys watched Heroes of the Dorm. Yes. On ESPN. I've seen it. I did, yes. I watched it through and through. Oh, is this, was, I heard of this. I didn't see it. I watched I it from start to finish, yeah. I saw opinions about this because it, it was uh, nonstop, just like, well, what the fuck are they doing? They, there's multiple doing things. This wrong. There's multiple Before we things start here. this conversation, can one of you explain exactly what happened? Okay, that's good, yeah. I, I saw the fallout. I didn't see the well, explosion. Well, I don't, I don't know if there was fallout. Uh, on Twitter the, there was. Uh, well, that oh, was because yeah. of ESPN people freaking out. I think yes. is what you're referencing. Anyways, uh, Heroes of the Dorm was a tournament that Blizzard decided to put on for Heroes of the Storm, which is their... Uh, they don't even call it a MOBA. They call it a action arena battle. Or, fuck, they have a weird term for it. They don't even call it a MOBA or anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I forget what their actual name for it is. Anyways, it's their MOBA. Uh, that's coming out. They announced a date for it sometime this summer. I don't know it off the top of my head, uh, but I think everyone here has played it. Me and Co I think Co, you've played it, right? Here's the storm, not yet. Okay, it's it's it's. I want to. It's decent. Like it's it's pretty good. Uh, and right now it's been. Uh, you have to to pay to get into it. I think it's been out in like alpha for. I don't know a long time. I think maybe a year, year and a half, something like that. Anyways, they did a tournament for it, uh, kind of this like pre-release tournament, and it was called Heroes of the Dorm. And the uh, what happened was, and I don't even know Zeke. I don't know if you know this, but the Rosen twins were uh, two guys that, while they were in school, uh, it I think it was UT Austin. It might be somewhere else. They started doing tournaments back in the day, uh, and it was called the. Not the Collegiate Star League. That was something else. Basically, they did tournaments where they would invite all these pros from the U.S. and they would go down there. And it was completely run by like a college crew, right? So about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, Blizzard hired these guys when they graduated. And what they did is took what they did there and translated that to Heroes of the Storm and made Heroes of the Dorm, which is a collegiate tournament, collegiate event uh, across the nation where they had all these different teams. And um, instead of going like the pro route, they went with like the, the collegiate route. And I think that was where the tie in with ESPN was. And that was why it was an easy sell is because everyone loves college sports. Right. And so that's kind of where they and were this, going with that. What was the prize? Wasn't the prize? So like the prize was, yeah, they, they would pay for the winning team's uh, entire college tuition. And it was even back tuition. So anything that they had spent on college is now getting paid for. So the team that won was from Cal Berkeley. And one of the players on the team was an ex-professional StarCraft II player who's getting his doctorate in something. But all of his school is being paid for, even backlogged. So that's a fuck ton of money. Like, mm -hmm. we were talking about this last night Hundreds briefly thousands, on Roleplay. Yeah. Like, Blizzard was probably just betting that, like, I don't know, some terrible fucking college of ones with, like, the smallest <laughs> tuition ever. And then Cal Berkeley wins. Probably, like, one of the more expensive schools that they could actually pay for. Um, so the backlash was, is this was on ESPN2, it was not live stream anywhere, I think you could actually watch it, 
if you had like a cable tie-in, but you had to have a cable tie-in. Um, it was streaming for a little bit on Twitch until it got banned eventually. It was a third-party stream. It wasn't an official stream. They restreamed it officially yesterday, I think is where it was officially restreamed. Um, but yeah, like that was one thing a lot of people were pissed about. The other thing was that people on ESPN2 lost their shit because they were expecting like real sports. And that's where it went trending like in the U.S. for almost the entire evening was that all these like sports guys that, you know, want to watch. I think like the NBA playoffs were on that night. There was two or three other giant sports events. And then on ESPN2 was <laughs> Heroes of the Dorm, right? Yeah. It, was the, it was the final match. It was the grand finals match. They had uh, Day 9, Artosis, Tasteless. And uh, tricks they're casting it with a couple Blizzard employees every one, uh, every now and then, uh, and it was like it was an actual like esports broadcast, and they took commercial breaks, they came back, and all that stuff. Uh, and I think it's two things need to be said. One, I am friends with everyone that I just mentioned, as well as the director Scoots, who I'm sure a lot of people know that is watching the channel. So I, I am not going to talk bad about it. And Zeke, on your end, I think it's interesting that like. A bunch of Twitch employees were shitting on it because, it, like, it, for them, I felt they were probably just like, "Why isn't this on Twitch?" Like, that was probably the first thing that came out of their. That's minds. the first thing I was thinking of. Yeah. Is why? Yeah. Like, so this is like a licensing. It was thing probably just like exclusivity on ESPN. Like, if you, I, I, I would assume there was probably so, some exclusive rights to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I it would interest me so much to see ESPN 2's viewer numbers during that. Oh, because they, they already, the, it was a, it was a point, a 0 0.1 demographic or 0 0.1 score on whatever the scale is. It was pretty terrible. So horrible. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I was thinking. Like that is a, why would you ever do that? Well, I mean, that's weird. That's like, that would, that would be like playing funny, sports that. on Twitch. That's that would be like putting a sports broadcast on the front page of Twitch. Like, that makes zero sense. Uh, think about your audience. Think about the people that go to ESPN, too. Uh, like, think... Uh, uh, ESPN. What was that, Z? They play poker on ESPN. That can That's be true. Game. That's true. But And I'd love to see the viewer numbers for that, too. But it's like, if you want to do... If you want to bring that kind of thing, and why not make a new ESPN just for that stuff? And then people that want to see that can go there. But it seems to me like ESPN's a huge sports name. Huge. Right. Right. Huge. Everyone knows it's sports. ESPN sports. So to put something that would even cause a slight amount of confusion like that in front of millions of people, when there's things like Twitch, where it's like that's all people go there to do, that's very strange. Was it at a primetime hour? What time was that at? Uh, started at 8.30 yeah. Central on a Sunday. So it was pretty prime time, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, it should – so it was a 0 0.1, which I think – TV uses such a fucking weird scale. I think that equates to like 150,000 or 100,000 people watching. So it's... No it's, idea. It's not bad. Like, I don't know. And, and again, we should well, probably but, state that a lot of the stuff we're kind of just guessing at. But, but here's the thing. Maybe they were testing. How, you, Maybe they were... Go ahead, blame them um, for like trying... I mean, trying this because this is... I mean, this is huge. This like this whole thing, this MOBA video game, like competitive esports things is enormous. Um, I don't blame them for, you know, dipping their toe into that. And I'm sure that's probably was their thing. It's like, we'll try this out, see what happens. And then you tune in for a guy like me who has no idea what's going on. I still didn't have any idea what was going on, like watching the thing. I was like, I had to ask someone next to me, like, what are they doing now? What's going on? And people who actually play the game and know the game were saying like, they, sh they, they should have like the mini map up on the screen so you can see where everybody is in, in relation. You should have this on the screen. You should have this. You guys have, and like every time they would cut away from like the action, they'd be like, this is, this is not where you cut away from the like, – well, like crowd yeah. reaction shots and stuff like that. It's like – That's would, true. They're, they're taking down a tower or whatever the fuck. I have no idea. But they're like, they're, do they're doing this right now. Why would they get a crowd shot right now? Stuff like that. It's like for people who knew what was going on and that kind of thing. So I think it's just – it's growing pains right now. I, th I don't think they're going to quit. I think it's just no. growing pains right now where they're uh, – To be honest. What the fans want and what – like how to, how to properly cover this on cable TV. To be honest, Tell me something. talking – or not talking, but uh, like what they did was across the board a huge success. 
Like, they don't, if they look at that and like, guys, we did all right, like, I'd be very, very, very surprised. Like, what they did was a huge fucking success. Like, the ESPN's probably super happy with it because, fuck, they were trending on Twitter for like all of Sunday evening. The, the conversation carried on to the next couple of days because, like, you had the idiot ESPN guy come out and say that he would quit his job if he ever had to cover it, blah, blah, blah. Like, everyone That's was talking about saw. it, right? Like, there was, <laughs> there was publicity everywhere about this thing right uh and last night i think when they were streaming they had like 15k watching or something like that i'm sure they pissed off their like core a little bit because it wasn't easily accessible but if i was blurred i would look at that and be like guys we like we did really well if someone there were a lot of tweets it was funny too if, if you were watching the hashtag as it, it was going on uh obviously when it first started everyone was like the fuck is this shit like i want to watch my baseball blah 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 well, and that like I thought about that too because I spend uh, spend uh, quite a bit of time in bars and stuff, and the the default channels for bars is the ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ESPN will be on ESPN one, ESPN two will usually be on. And I was just like, I wonder what like people in you know ass fuck Montana are going like. What is this shit? The fuck is this shit? See, and that to me that get off of my screen. To me, that's a win too because it got so many eyes on. Someone who used to, as someone who used to be super involved with esports, that's like the dream, right? It's like getting this into people's homes that have no idea what the fuck it is. Yep. And even yep. if they watch it for five seconds and they make the idea or make the decision that like this is not for them, they made that decision and they were able to make that decision, right? Uh, like towards the end of the the uh, the broadcast, the the tweets were actually like, I have no idea, but I'm, what I'm watching, but these commentators are drawing me in, and I've been watching for an hour. Like there were multiple multiple tweets that were saying that. And so if yeah, it had yeah. that impression over the course of three or four hours, like I think that's a huge win for not just Blizzard, but like people who enjoy esports. Because there's no denying that Heroes of the Dorm is not the biggest esport. Heroes of the Storm is not the biggest esports game, but it, mm -hmm. it was a huge pathway. Like it's a huge gateway thing that maybe they're going to get involved in all this other stuff now, or maybe we're going to see more stuff on ESPN. Like, do you like that? I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. I I understand that like it should live and breathe on like Twitch or a streaming website that's accessible to everyone, um, not just like whoever has cable television. That that was kind of shitty, but I think that's something that had to happen, just so ESPN could have it on there, like have it on ESPN, right? Yeah. I think if it's ever on ESPN again, if any other esport is on ESPN, you'll never. You'll never see it on a Twitch or anything, just because of exclusivity rights. But well, okay, you've you've done you've done esports, uh, JP. So yeah. let me ask you a question about that. Do you have you ever been doing it? Like you, you like did the? Well, let me, uh, just to ask the question. Um, sure. Where they put up? Sorry about the P. Um, where they put a personality with you, just because they're like a personality and they know dick about like what's going on. Mm. But they're there because you know they're they're good they're 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 um, commentators of something else or something like that. It seemed like that's kind of like the, what the production of this was. It was like people who know how to do a production, but not the game, and that seems like it's important to know. Uh, I would say yes, that has happened before, but this mm -hmm. is a unique case because Heroes doesn't have that person. The only person that could really say should have been on if you're speaking directly to the casters the only person that should have been on there is probably someone like grubby who knows the game in and out and he actually casted the tournaments leading up to it the other rounds um but at the same time like there is no definitive heroes caster okay so have you seen other broadcasts like have you seen like because i've heard like league of legends has been on espn dota has been on espn is that true that's I don't true think, actually i don't think they've ever been on espn 2 or espn proper i think they've been on espn yeah. 3 like, i might be wrong about that i haven't have followed seen ever before. seen what like the broadcast a broadcast of that uh no i i, I might have saw I the how they yes. act that uh in comparison to this yeah i mean i i think that for the most part, they had people on there that knew their game, or they had like the super generic host that was good at hosting, and then they had the expert analyst. Like that's kind of the usual setup for a lot of the stuff is you have the host, you have the person that really knows the game, and then you have kind of like the the bridge between the two. If you're going to use like a triple person cast, having four people actually was pretty unique 
uh, in esports. Like that's very rarely done. Having three people is very unique, especially for the people that were broadcasting it, who are primarily StarCraft broadcasters who are always doing dual broadcast. So like mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. them do th three person cast was very not what they are used to. But oh. I think they did a good job. Oh, okay. That's that's all I wondered. Like I think it's just going to be like a, a basis of like getting enough mail or whatever you want to call it messages from people saying like, "All right, not bad first effort on the Heroes of the Storm thing." Yeah, but uh, there are things we need to change. Things that definitely need to happen if we do it again and that kind of stuff. So I think that's probably like a lot of people were like, excuse me, not a lot of people. The people that were passionate about video game broadcasting and stuff like that and knew the game that I was sitting with were saying like, we're like giving like suggestions, I guess you could call them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Like, like so, why are they doing this? They need to do this. And like, I think that's just the passion to of the camera. What, when to, when to zoom in, when to, you know, show right. the map, when to blah, blah, blah. You had an armchair director. And I, I think that that's just yeah. kind of like a passionate esports fan. Like mm -hmm. everyone that watches esports prior to this was doing the very same thing, but they were yeah. also, yeah. If most of the time they're just like, wow, this is actually really cool. Like there are some flaws in this, but this is really cool that it's happening. Yeah. yeah. Did they like go over all the stuff about Heroes of the Storm and what it is and how to play it? Like did Very they briefly. preface? Very briefly. Really? Okay. They, they would do like a, so the actual game, they removed all of the HUD elements from it. Uh, and they would only bring up the mini map like every once in a while when honestly, when that was like requested from the broadcasters, they would flash it on screen, I think. Um, I'm probably gonna <laughs> Scoots is probably gonna be like, no, you got it all wrong, JP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like, and then I think at the very beginning, they when they would go into the maps because like every map is different in Heroes, they would go and like talk about what the goals are and like why this map is unique, and they would okay. talk a little bit. They would show like the heroes, and they would show the six hero abilities. They would just show the tooltip and talk about them at length. If they if they actually showed like in game and showed the actual ability, that would be a little bit cooler moving forward. But that obviously that's much harder to do. That's just much more assets that have to be acquired to do something like that. But like, there, yes, there's definitely things they could have improved on across the it, board. If I were to see like my own opinion about it, like watching it as a lay person that's never that doesn't know what's going on, I don't I I don't think it would have been bad of them to reiterate over and over again the basics of the thing, like what a, what you have to do, what the goal is, how to win over and over and over again, like every 15 minutes say like, what they really want to do is the main goal. And then the, to do this, they have to do and like synopsize it like every so often because right. that, that would invest, well, you know, in the, in the actual, you know, game. <laughs> absolutely. But like, like Divinor, just ask a question. So why should they go through it? Do they do that with football or baseball? Like every time they play that, but here, well, here's the thing. Yeah. This is, this is why I made my comments at the beginning. If you're, you know, ex sports guy and you're sitting there watching ESPN and all of a sudden, this computer game comes on that you've never seen before. You have no idea what they're doing. You've never played it. Like, that's why at the beginning of this, I was like, why would you ever do that? Like, all of your audience would have no clue what they're looking at unless you thoroughly explained it. Hey, see this guy here? He's really good because look how he plays. You should be impressed by that. Right. You're like, these people are going to watch this and go, cool. Like, little guys are walking around the screen. <laughs> I don't know what makes them good. I don't know why I'm watching this over my normal sports. Like, what am I looking for? What's what's bad? You know, like it, it's it's that's again at the beginning why I was so confused. Like, why would ESPN ever do that? Because it seems so alien. It seems like it does, yeah, Joe sure. Sports that doesn't understand what he's seeing. It's a waste of his time. Well, I mean, but on that note, on that note, I think it'd be really cool if ESPN and like you were saying, you know, slowly introduced this thing to their audience. You know, maybe really thoroughly explained. You know, hey, let's show you a highlight. Why is this a highlight? Because if you see here, he could have done all this other stuff, but he did this, and that's took split second decision making and that's actually really impressive you know, like to explain to them what they're watching and seeing and maybe that they'll, they'll start getting excited about it when they see this stuff yeah but just dropping them into it especially some of these guys where sports you know you know the rules and at that point you know how people work you know how bodies work you know what to look for sure but I, with these games yeah. it's a totally different ball field i mean I, it is but i think that the core thing of I hope I th I think the color I think it was red versus blue in the team colors. Like team red is fighting team blue. They got to kill this core. I can get a, like people were getting excited about the fact that they were attacking a core. Granted, if you play the game, you knew that like if they were gonna kill this core, or not from the seconds they started hitting it, right? So like that was kind of 
as someone who's played the game before, and I'm sure a lot of people got this as well, like the announcers would be like, oh my God, are they going to be able to kill the core? And it's like, yes, yeah, so a fuck it. Like it's, it's five versus two. Like they're going to be able to kill this no matter what. So that was a little bit misleading, I guess. But the, the idea of like someone tuning in, not knowing exactly what the fuck is going on, there was enough for them to like grasp onto. Um, yeah. Sure. And, and I think that, you know, in general, like sports, baseball, basketball, football, like those are things that have been ingrained in like American culture for, I don't know, a ton of years. Right. So like you grew up and by the year, by five or six, you know, kind of what in football, you take the ball and you carry it to the touch. Like you understand that, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you understand how that goes. At the most basic level. So I think that's kind of Look, what you saw this, this weekend. I love sports ball, okay? I love it. You take and the ball and you carry it to the touch. To, you know you know how it works. That's to a sixer. I mean, that's how that's how they see it, man. I love it. You don't, you don't know that, like, X, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That if, if a fucking lineman lines up a certain way that it's going to be this play and that you need to watch out for the wide receiver is going to be running this certain route. Like, that stuff comes later. And I think that's just be, that's that's what you learn from watching the game. Yeah, true. Over true. over an extended period of time. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Co. But I I don't see ESPN on Sports Center being like, let's check out that play they did last night where they had uh, I don't know whatever the fucking heroes are in here. Oh the my storm. god! Can well, you, I mean, you say that though. You say that. Can you imagine I, if I, they did a top ten? Like, imagine if the the they're going ham on the core thing, which was like the big the big uh, comment from the broadcast, shows yeah. up in like the top ten of this week on ESPN. Dude, I have watched some, I mean, I don't even play League of Legends, but there have been times when I've been linked highlight reels from like really good players and stuff and seen some of that stuff. Some of that stuff is really cool. Oh, yeah. Like you see yeah. in incredible decision making and micromanagement over like a 10 second period. I could completely see sure. something like that being on ESPN. Like check out this, you know, this highlight, you know, this guy got a pen a kill. Like let's go, let's cut to the, the highlight, you know, something like I can completely see that with these games. Yeah. No, but I again, mean, again, they need the audience needs to understand what they're seeing. You right. know, it, it, it would be a gradual process. And in terms of getting this ready, I mean, if ESPN came up with a plan where when they originally aired these, you know, they really told the announcers to err on the side of explaining, like they, they could did for sure. subvertly introduce their entire viewership to, to this whole game thing just by kind of making a, a plan in the background about how their announcers would project it. Right. And I think you can already tell from the broadcast, like, that was a statement that was said from the very beginning was like, dumb this down to the best of your ability. And I think that's also it's why they brought in like Nick, uh, uh, Artosis and Tasteless because they're really good at that. Like Nick is really good at making it the most basic thing. So if anyone's watching it, they can understand it for the most part. Uh, it's just kind of the same thing for all the games that he's, it's kind of the same show in a sense of when, when it comes to that, uh, when it comes to his casting, but I thought it was a good job. We were watching in the hotel. Um, something that that uh, I don't look out for, but was kind of interesting to note that uh, if uh, when they went to commercials, um, you could see like two. There was three commercials. Two of them were Blizzard commercials, and only one so, of them outside source commercial that they that you know. So that that I mean, doesn't that that says like. This is like still new. Like no one wants to put their commercial during this event because of. You know. I uh, well, I don't want to call you out. Uh, that Blizzard is trying to push their name. Oh, with oh their hold own. on, Zeke. I Go don't want to call you out, but okay. Were you actually watching an ESPN two broadcast? Yes, I was watching on the television. On the television, and it was only you only saw like the Blizzard commercials. That, no, someone pointed this out to me. Oh, okay. I, because yeah, I, that's right. Last commercial break was two Blizzard commercials and one for a of the of, 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 Okay, because like, I, I asked that same question on like, because I was not watching an actual ESPN2 broadcast, right? So I was wondering like, what are these commercials that you guys are getting? And a lot of people are saying like Gillette. Uh, I think there was a couple of Geico commercials. So like they, they were actually selling ad spots to it. Oh, okay. They were okay. actually selling ads to it, but... If you're watching a lot of the non-cable ESPN two broadcast, <laughs> it was a lot of Hearthstone, it was a lot of Warlords of Draenor, and it was a lot of like ESPN stuff. It was all in-house that weren't actual ads. So yeah. I think that was the ESPN three broadcast that was showing those because the actual like proper stuff had all the from what people are telling me it had all the other ads on it. Okay, because that was interesting to me too. Is like were they able to sell these ads? 
Like yeah. we're, we're advertisers, advertisers wanting to buy into this. And I, it seems like they kind of were, but not maybe on the bigger scales. But. Right, right, sure. But yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know why we... Whatever. We went off on that. That happened. <laughs> well, that's impo- it's been important gaming news, man. Sure, sure. Exactly. That shit's important. It's the developing industry. That's yeah. true. That's true. It'll be interesting to see. Like, that. It, it, the future's going to be weird when all that starts. Uh, like, what... Uh, Riot's already got, like, this in-house broadcast thing, right? Like, they are their own league, right? What if Blizzard just lets ESPN build something around it, right? Like, what if they let them be their broadcast partner? Like, well, it's such a weird it, thing. It seems, though, that, I mean, okay, if if Blizzard, if this thing really does work, if, if ESPN looked at this, like you said, and said, this is a success, it makes perfect sense to think LCS will not get brought into the fold. I mean, it'd be, it, yeah. from ESPN's perspective, why not bring in an established, already broadcasting, already, like, they can just add that into the lineup, you Yeah, know? it's a little, so it'd be, can, you, can you imagine the backlash, though, if LCS came out tomorrow and they were like, guys, we're going to go on ESPN. That means we, we got to shut down all our, we can't stream on Twitch anymore. We got to go to ESPN too. Like, I think that might be the biggest channel on Twitch in terms of like followers besides Justin, because all of Justin TV got moved to it. Like they're at like 1.5 or something like that. Like, and they get like 260 concurrent whenever they broadcast. So can you imagine it's- the backlash for that? Here's the thing though, JP, you're, you're now starting to talk about kind of the next phase of Twitch in general. Because what happens when Soda Poppin is approached by some big production company and they go, we want you to make a show one hour on our broadcasting station. But here's the thing. We're going to pay you a ton of money and you can't stream on Twitch anymore. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that may actually really start happening. The more popular Twitch gets, the more the people that want to make money off that popularity are going to look at it and go, okay, let's see how far it gets until our cost benefit ratio works to offer them deals. So, I mean, this is LCS, Blizzard, all this stuff. This, it's it's kind of a micro look at what potentially could happen to a lot of channels True. as kind of Twitch grows. I think we could I'm sure spend... it took, I mean, I'm sure it took Blizzard, you know, working up that chain to get to a point to where oh, yeah. ESPN even considered that kind of thing. So. 100%. 100%. Uh, I think yeah. that we could spend a lot of time talking about that conversation, but I feel like we're years away from that actually being worth a broadcaster I, leaving Twitch to go do his own one hour show somewhere, regardless of what, unless the money is like, really? I, you think we're that far away? No, from no, I, I think it's going to happen, but I think it's a, a catastrophic fuck up if a broadcaster says yes to that and leaves Twitch to go do that. I would agree. I, w- I would agree, generally. I'm, I'm on um, the unless fence. it's like a hosting Bye. deal for a network or yeah. something. You know, unless it's like some hugely, in- I would agree. Because, I mean, the num- you know, Twitch is blowing up every yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, so just that type of, a, type of uncertainty, you wouldn't want to write that off in any, in any capacity. That's also true. So I, I do want to get this point in here. Uh, Kaiko Big says, don't forget about the non-USA crowd. Of course, like, I didn't even think about that. LCS is much more of a global thing than just ESPN, right? So... So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why we went on that topic, but I think I was interested, so I'm glad we had it. <laughs> I'm glad we had it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, this could be a whole future episode yeah. about Twitch and the next steps that Twitch is taking and LCS and Blizzard. Now, whole episode right there. It's true. That's true. Uh, well, Zeke, did, did what? You... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. If you want to. No, I'm just saying. Like, what? What if uh, Twitch became a new like G4? Like, oh, you mean like an actual TV network? Yeah, I don't think Twitch will ever be on TV. Good the point. only thing I could see is if Twi- I could see Twitch going to TV as long as every single contract involving that allowed them to continue doing what they're doing. I like as long as it wasn't exclusivity stuff. I could I could totally see Twitch partnering with I don't, TV now. I don't think Twitch wants anything to do with TV on any level, or will ever want any. I I feel like they look at TV and they're just like you fucking idiots. Like what are you doing? You know, you make a good well, point because I don't. That's that's the, the the only TV I watch now is hotel TV. Yeah, I'm, I don't have TV at home. I don't have. Yeah, cable. or you watch it stream, like you watch a Hulu or a Netflix or. Yeah, a, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But you just have to think, like you know, we're we're 
we talk to the people that do this. We keep, you know, there's millions and millions of people that aren't quite up to the, the E entertainment level where you just get what you want whenever you want it. There's millions of people that if they saw this would jump on board. Yeah. So if Twitch was allowed to, again, continue doing everything they're doing, nothing had to change, but also could throw some hooks into that pond, so to speak, of all these people that have simply never heard of Twitch, mm. why wouldn't you do that? God, you know, I mean, I'm just just thinking about how if if there was a show, not a, not necessarily a channel, but like a show on like Showtime, HBO, where it was like, like, I don't fucking know, name a title, like Games This Week, and it was just an hour long. On like a paid channel like HBO, Showtime, Star, or something like that. Yeah. And we could just like this, like this right here. Like if, if HBO came to you, JP, and was like, hey, we like what you're doing on Drop Frames, and we think this is where the, the industry is going. A lot of people love uh uh games and love your show and yada yada yada. What what would you say if we did a, a weekly show? Like one hour a week where you guys and you guys were in a studio and we talk video games and shit like that, and we, you know. Like I said, what 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 would be your take on that? Uh, immediately, I'd have to be like, I I think that the first person would be like, well, that's pretty fucking cool. Like that that would be the first thing that crossed my mind. That's pretty fucking cool. Second thing would be like, I need to see all the specifics <laughs> because like there's so many things there. Like, can I still stream it on Twitch? Will it be streamed on Twitch first and then put to VOD afterwards on HBO where it's proper and primmed up and it's an hour complete with like actual segments and all that like that's the only way i see that existing like twitch is such a different beast than anything tv related it it's it's a a broadcaster can turn on a stream and can turn off the stream whenever they want he can do a two minute stream and he might have twenty thousand people show up for that two minute stream like there is nothing like, it's so so different from tv and i think that Twitch looks at TV and they're the exact same way. They, they say like, one, our content will never match what TV's content is. Two, why the fuck do we want to go there? We already control the demographics that we would actually be going for on TV. Because it's not like we want the, the 40 plus or the 10 or younger. I mean, maybe they want the 10 or younger demographic, but uh, they'll probably get them in like the, the 14 to the 21 range in a couple of years. Um, I, I don't know. Obviously, that would be cool. Yeah, but probably I don't. Yeah, know. that's all I'm saying. I, mean, like, I, I if, see. But, I definitely. Oh, go ahead, Z. No, I'm just saying if it was like you know, like the the John Oliver last week tonight kind right. of thing. It was like games this week right now. Blah blah. blah. One hour. We like I don't know. Put it together and then give. Oh, sorry. Give him like a whole edited show and and we yeah do segments and stuff like that. Like that'd be I mean be kind of tempting, you know. It'd be. I would like to bring that to an audience that watches HBO that doesn't fucking know any that's never heard of Twitch, you know. Yeah. Well, and again, <laughs> when when I was talking about Twitch going to TV, I didn't necessarily mean you know like channel Twitch or anything right. like that. I'm more talking about Twitch reaching out to news variety shows, things like that. You know, the Twitch ten minutes, where maybe at the end of or the news thing, they just throw in you know like a bunch of Twitch highlights that were really funny that time, or just, you know just random stuff where Twitch is more. Media centric. The the big the big reason that I even think about anything like this is because you know we were talking about this on other shows. You walk down the street and you ask 100 people two questions: What is YouTube, and what is Twitch TV? Right. And see how many people know what one is and what the other is. Yeah, I think and it would be widely you're be, skewed. First of all, surprised YouTube. by that, exactly. And yeah. second of all, you would go, okay, so what what could happen to bring Twitch more up to that other level, and what would that mean for Twitch? So you know, just kind of. Twitch right now is kind of, a, it's, it's all on the internet. It's all, kind of, you know, except the, the live events and stuff. It's all kind of contained in its own environment. So the thinking that I had is, you know, get it out there more. Get Twitch, not necessarily its own shows or its own channels, just on television. Run ads for Twitch. You know, like that's, that's more what I'm talking about. Get, sure. get into TV and enlighten the people why Twitch is better than what they're seeing. <laughs> you know, yep. that kind of stuff. But then there's a, there is that converse argument of like, Everything's moving towards the internet anyway, so why bother? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, like, uh, no one that I personally know really watches a whole lot of TV unless they unless it's for a specific show like Game of Thrones. Like, that's the only reason why I have cable. It's background noise. Yeah. It's just background noise. And hell, now I, I got HBO Live just so I can watch Game of Thrones without having yeah. to get cable. I don't even get cable. Netflix, Hulu, and Xbox Live and Crunchyroll. Yep. 
You have those four things, you're done for yeah. entertainment. Congratulations. You've well, won how, how much they pay you to say that? <laughs> oh, I need to talk to them. Eventually, I, I think you're. Streamers. Eventually, that's all going to be consolidated into one thing. Like, there's no doubt about. I, I think 10, it might even be closer than that years from now. You're going to have all of that under one house. Yep. It's going to be like cable packages where you buy channels, yeah. you buy on demand services. It's and and exactly. if the ISPs of the world control that, then we're fucking doomed if someone else a third party uh corporation owns that then like that's that's cool but we'll see you pay per show it's 125 per show yeah it can get really real <laughs> shitty real quick uh it's like itunes for songs I, I, episodes you were shows. talking about i don't know why this is cool i think it's just a, a stat that i was blown away by you're talking about like youtube and twitch on like and, and who's more recognizable or who's bigger and like the, the show, social norm uh there was an article I was reading last week, and I wish I could find it. I'm going to try to find it after the broadcast. Um, they were talking about like how the new stars our age are all YouTube stars, right? Uh, and there were constant, like, PewDiePie obviously comes up immediately in that conversation. Um, and there was a, there is a YouTuber by the name of uh, Michelle Fawn, Michelle Fan. I don't know how to, I'm sorry for not, sorry for butchering the name if I am. Um, and she's a makeup artist on YouTube, right? She does a bunch of makeup things. She has her own, uh, you know, like the loot crates and, and things like that, that uh, in our world, she does one for makeup and her estimated the, the, the number that was flying around with how many people are signed up for that was 120 million a year revenue. And this is a YouTuber that created this. So like, if you put that in comparison to people on Twitch, we are fucking ants. <laughs> <laughs> we are fucking nobodies compared to some of these bigger YouTubers, I feel like. Yeah. Well, but you're talking about a business she came up with and marketed, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but it was it was born and bred out of YouTube. It's a little different than content creator, though. But, yeah. I mean, she's still one of the biggest YouTubers on YouTube. YouTube. That's true, and she utilized that platform to... I, right, uh, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. But, but they've had years, though. They've had years on, on Twitch. Like, YouTube has, oh, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Should start, like... Yeah. 90 what? Do what? we know? The, what, the what was that? year that YouTube started. Uh, Probably like 99 or 98 or something like that. Late late 90s. Okay, that's you know, 16, 17 years that they've had on, or 15 years they've had on Twitch. As far as like how uh, establishing yourself, like we're in the first two years of Twitch, we're going to see the first millionaire. I don't think YouTube did that. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. In fact, I, I don't think YouTube did that for several years because no one on YouTube realized that you could like make videos and monetize them. Like the the advent of Let's Plays didn't really start till like the like late two thousands, honestly. Yeah. I, Look I at all these different that. like differing opinions. Like it started in this, this, this. Pretty sure it started in twenty eleven. Yeah, it was no, two thousand five. Oh, okay, 2005. I was completely wrong. Then. Saying two thousand five. Did it really well, start in two thousand? That, I, that I feels around way longer than that. Yeah, that feels uh, wildly feels, late. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to YouTube Wikipedia. Yeah. Founded in February 14th, 2005, 10 years ago. Really? Really? Seems so much longer than that. It seems so much longer than what that. What the fuck did we do before YouTube? Like in 2004, what the hell were it. we doing? I was playing StarCraft and CSGO and Quake 3 in 2004. Like what? To think that it has its saturation like it does now, after only 10 years later. Yeah. That's 2004, I had just dropped out of college. Yeah. I was just about to graduate college. Yeah. <laughs> 2004. <laughs> and I can't believe YouTube was not around. Wow. That, wow. Is, that is a little nuts. Yeah. It feels longer. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about games, it, what we've been playing at all, so I apologize for that. We're going we're gonna to lightning around this because I want to get a meet on and uh, sure. talk to him. I think he actually could probably contribute to this conversation uh, a lot as well. So so, so when the when the show is on your channel, we're going to actually do a break and have a commercial and stuff? Hey, that's nice. That's really yeah, nice. It's true. <laughs> Only because we got to bring him on. Shots fired. Yeah. I'm King Shit JP. <laughs> I do what I want. My channel. Is that when blow up? My channel, we do it right way. I need to get, is that a blow up? I need to get one of those. Uh, do it, it's, I got it on the loot crate. Nice. There <laughs> no, you go. No, this last loot crate, this may, I'm not kidding you. It's fucking awesome. I saw Mine a lot got of stolen. You person would love it. JP. Y yours got stolen? Mine got stolen. Dude, I, my loot crate came opened like three things in a plastic bag with a tape around it. What the fuck? 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know where the plastic bag came from. How long have you guys been? Uh, I'm doing it again. I'm taking it on a tangent. How long have you guys been on like the the loot crate thing? I I have not signed up for any of them, but have you guys been with it for a while? Uh, I I just started. Uh, so I've gotten two loot crates so far, okay. and their their shit is. I mean, I don't mind like talking about those guys. Their shit is really straightforward. Um, that's you. You get little like cool trinkety things. You get like T-shirts. You get I got like Lord or uh, uh, Game of Thrones magnets. Um, I got a really the the cool the really coolest thing that I got so far was a shirt with you know the ampersand from the old uh, AD and D. Yeah, it's like the dragon with the flame coming out. Yeah, old school like that. I got a, it's a got red that on there. Put that on it. It was really cool. That's yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you know like, a lot of that stuff comes from conventions that are just throwing stuff away? And that's where oh, it get seems, all that stuff? Oh, it seems absolutely that's, cool. that's where it comes from. Yeah. Like, how fucking smart is that as a business model to be like, hey, we'll take that stuff off. You, you, you're you going to give it to it? Okay, great. They get a lot of that stuff for free. Like, I'm sure they do. I believe it. Because it, it's either going in the dump or it's going to go to them. It, it's fucking brilliant. Like, it's an amazing business that they started there. I saw, like, I'm not kidding you, 10 people at the Comic-Con wearing that red uh, ampersand shirt. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super but smart. I, I got to say, I've been with Loot Crate probably about seven or eight months now. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I've, I've been kind of bad lately about my unboxings for the last couple months. And it seriously gets to a point when you look around and you're just like, I have so you much have so much shit. shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, I think just that you, like uh, so much. I mean, don't get me wrong. If if you like live in, uh, if you work in a cubicle, or if you're a college student, a dorm, or something, you know that stuff's perfect. It's perfect for that kind of stuff. But when you have like an office, and you know, it, and it's already kind of packed, and you already got stuff. I mean, it's yeah, just just like some, uh, just like you said earlier, it's it's a very straightforward thing. But um, when you get to a point where you just have too much of that stuff, it's just kind of like. I, you're, you're swimming in it. Yeah, uh, that's that's kind of why I haven't signed up. Well, for I'm that. not at that. You don't want to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's one of my closets. It's just like convention crap. Like I actually still have my BlizzCon goodie bags from like last year, the year prior. I think I actually still have the actual bag, like the shitty plastic bag that that came in somewhere in my fucking bedroom. So yeah, that's how terrible I am throwing that away. Trinkets and baubles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, the, the worst part about Loot Crate, though, is all the stuff in it is cool. So because of that, you, can't throw any of you it don't away. want to throw any of it away. So I have like a box of Loot Crate stuff, just like a box. Of, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't have any use for it, but yeah. it's not getting thrown it, away. You're going to get more stuff, and it's going to go in that same box. That's I know, right? That's how it's gonna go. In, in ten years, to my kid, I'm gonna be like, "And today, son, I gift you <laughs> with <laughs> with thousands of toys you'll never need." Yeah, you just pull out some random. I don't know what this is, son, but here, take it. <laughs> it's yours from now. A failed video game franchise from 2010. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, what are we even playing, right? Yeah, Zeke, did you play anything on the, the plane? Are you, are you a big mobile guy? No, I played. I played uh, um, uh, a couple things like for a few minutes on. Uh, the stage one was uh, that I've never played before called Gang Beasts. Awesome game. That was fun. It was it was the all the all the hosts. We actually just had a, a half an hour segment where we had to kill time and we played Gang Beasts and it was it was drunk sock puppet fighting and it was awesome, a, dude. That game's of, amazing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, that's on that's on Steam. It's it's uh, four or uh, uh, four. Wait, not four v four. What? How do you say that? It's just all on all four player like sock puppet drunk sock puppet four player beat 'em up. There you go, four player beat 'em up. Yeah. Um, and then I played a little bit of the new uh, Jackbox Quiplash game, which is uh, perfect for Twitch because uh, you can play it with a number like a number of people. I don't know. I think we played with eight, and then uh, everybody who's watching that's in the room, like the on the Jackbox TV room, can vote on who they think was the funniest, and then they'll win. So that's I mean that was a really cool game. And the Jackbox guys were just like you think they are. They're kind of like they're <laughs> kind of like, like jerk offs. No, they're just, they're just like like oh man, yeah we play it as like we drink beer and play it at the yeah. studio and stuff like that like they're you know they're that's, ex they're that's exactly what I pictured. Yep, and they're just like that, and they're really they were really cool. But those are the two new games I played. I played some Nidhog obviously with with fucking Samwise Gamgee, which was cool. Um, but other than that, like nothing like super brand new that I played. Oh oh wait, yes I did. I actually picked up FTL for the first time. On my uh, on my iPad. Oh, you never played it? Because, no, because I because I thought we we're gonna play it with the other space guys. We didn't end up doing it, but I wanted to have like a basic knowledge of it, and I picked it up, and it was fun. It was fucking fun. Yeah, FTL is a great game. 
But yeah, it's that's, fantastic. That's you can play that if you like that game. You can play it for fifty hours. Yep, easy, and probably not even beat it. I think that Zeke or, or uh, Wheat actually did that. He's played like hundred plus hours, and he finally beat it like two weeks ago, and he hasn't played it since. <laughs> oh, so, FTL. yeah, of FTL, of FTL. Yeah. So there's actually uh, well, random side note: if you like FTL, you should check out a game called Convoy. Yeah, it's we were like talking FTL about that last. Did you actually play that? Mad Max. Yeah, I've actually played it probably like nine or ten hours now. It's a lot of fun. Really? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. What uh, I, I guess, uh, Co. What are you? What have you been playing? Which I know Witcher one. Yeah, actually, I finished it right before we started today. Nice. I, I wrapped it up. We did everything in Witcher one there was to do. We got like all the named swords, the custom armor, like tons of money. Um, it was it was a it for an import into Witcher two. It was a, a perfect playthrough for that. And I'm actually going to make that save game available because I've recently learned a lot of people want to play Witcher two with it. So we're going to do that. And I'm starting Witcher two actually right after this. So nice. Very excited. Was uh, was it a brutal playthrough? Like, does that game hold up over the years? You know what? Um, first of all, for a for a seven or eight year old game, it it's incredible. Like the, the the fact that games come out today that can't even hold a candle to this game, <laughs> and it was like seven or eight years ago. And then when they came out with the enhanced edition a few years later, they made a lot of great uh, changes. They they the graphics have been updated. You know, it uses a lot of new features and stuff. Um, they put in auto looting. You know, like all sorts of really handy things. Um, but what what's kind of interesting is. Playing this time, you know, incredibly, I had usually between like three and 5,000 people in the channel for this game. And I had these few guys that were like lived and breathed Witcher. Oh, they yeah, they told you like anytime we came up to a story character, they'd like tell you the backstory from the books. And they, you know, did you get this before you go forward? You need to make sure you do this and do this. So this playthrough ended up being like spotless except for this one damn quest I don't want to talk about. But <laughs> everything else was great. And uh, we did like... At the end, I remember when I played Witcher before, you know, you get towards the end of the game and there are these two fights. And one of them, I remember reloading like 10 times and like having to go back and make potions and all that stuff. And the last fight was really tough. I remember in this playthrough being like, oh, man, you know, kind of that little feeling of dread. Like, oh, I wonder how I'm going to do on that fight. Like, you know, yeah. this time, man, I just walked up and I like I like put my sword on him and he died. He like really? exploded. You were just it was, it was, or what? I just I did everything. I did oh, okay. everything in the game that I could have done. So like I had all the best potions, I had the best swords, all my skills were tuned for that fight. You know, like it was it was incredible. And I remember just I remember just sitting beating it and sitting back just earlier today. Oh. Was does Witcher <laughs> so one good. does Witcher uh -huh. one have the combat re thing? Or is that only Witcher two? Witcher 1 does not have the rebalance mod. Rebalance, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, and what's really cool about that mod, for those who don't know, is when Witcher 2 was released, the combat is okay, but there's a lot of little issues with it. And a lot of the little issues that CD Projekt Red wanted to make, they didn't have time to put in. Right. So this employee of Witcher product took it, or Witcher, or CD Projekt, took it on himself to make this mod. So it's not an official mod, but it has all the stuff CD Projekt wanted it to be in there. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be using it. Because uh, Witcher 3 has um, an import from Witcher 2. You can carry your game from 1 to 2 to 3. And just on the 1% chance it may screw with that, because we're doing a, like another perfect playthrough of Witcher 2, we're not going to touch it. When I, yeah, when I did Witcher 1 and 2 playthroughs, like I had nothing on the first one, and I wish I would have done on the second one and had no none mods, because it is like people will like come physically, like, like chat, hate on you for that like why do you even have this mod on yeah people my suggestion you on to everybody is if you're gonna play the game play it as it released first so people don't like well why is it doing that just not the way it's supposed to be. yeah i wish I'd i could actually back and not had done no mods and so i wouldn't have to hear that bullshit hmm. you you could not like it's it's funny you brought it up before i could um with in my witcher one playthrough i've never played a game where people asked me more if it was modded or not and every time I said vanilla, like so many times, you, what do you mean? Why is it vanilla? Why would you do that? Like, like insulting yeah. me. I'd like, what's wrong with you? You should have so, been uh, like, hey, man, they were charging me money. Didn't you see Steam last week? Is crazy. Right. But, <laughs> we, um, <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Thank God we didn't talk about we that. We didn't talk about that a little bit. <laughs> But that being said, um, I'm actually already in the process of getting an overlay element made saying that the game is vanilla. Like, this is a yeah. vanilla yes. whole playthrough. You so have it's to, like, man. And I'm going to put in my title, like, the whole nine yards. So. You fucking have to. Like, yeah. it gets crazy answering the same question over and over. You'll actually go insane. Like, I've gone insane. I la I've lashed out at people just like, 
I don't just fucking go to the website. And it doesn't matter. If <laughs> just you put check it the on schedule. The screen. It doesn't matter if you put it on the screen. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. They will still fucking ask. Like, yeah. is this his first playthrough? It says first playthrough right at the bottom. Plain text. First playthrough. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, maybe we'll. Fuck it. I kind of do want to talk a little bit about the Elder Scrolls thing, but we only got like 15 minutes. Uh, did you? Did, well, what? Take, did it you, up. Take, take up the 15 minutes and do it. Well, Co, did you play anything else on your channel? Are you still playing GTA? Um, did you finish that? I finished GTA. Rapid fire amazing questions. Go. Ending. <laughs> I, I sat back. Okay, I'll do I'll really quick. Finished GTA. Amazing ending. Totally blew me away. If you've never played GTA 5, play it for the story alone. The characters' voice acting are incredible. Convoy 2, like FTL, has some weird little issues because it's new. Tangent Gaming actually got a nod to it from the devs because he played it so much that you did a patch and put him in convoy so That's look awesome. out for the the guy with the beanie in there That's and awesome. uh but very fun very fun definitely worth checking out if you like fdl also another game i've been playing off stream dungeons 2 which is kind of like what you I would get if this. you took dungeon keeper and combined it with an rts you yeah. would have dungeons 2 and to be perfectly honest it's a lot of fun it's it i feel kind of like it's on rails because there's this narrator that basically is telling you exactly what to do the whole game but um, it's fun. It's really fun. If you like Dungeon Keeper and you, you kind of like RTSs, you'll probably like Dungeons too. Yeah, I think uh, Jim Sterling was actually holding that game in pretty high regard. So maybe I'll check that out. Uh, I ended up, I didn't, I haven't played much. I played just Final Fantasy and then a bunch of the roleplay stuff. Uh, I did check out the Mario Kart 8 DLC with 200 CC. Uh, that, it's fuck, that's, that game's fucking hard. <laughs> 200 it's hard CC. normally. Me and Gassy and uh, Spoon, Spoonerism played. Uh, man, that game. If you're going to talk about Mario Kart 8, I'm, I'm going to step up for a second. It's literally going to be 30 seconds, and it's that that game is really difficult at 200 CC. Uh, it's just too fast. I'm just kidding. I fucking hate it. I... Do you? <laughs> I hate it. I Does it just make you hate. upset? Yes, it makes me. Sorry. Wait, I'm it was a pretty way. rage-filled cast. I'm the same way with Mario Kart. I hate being that bad at a game. I like to think I'm at somewhat decent at video games, but playing Mario Kart oh, when man. it's a victory that your place isn't two digits, there's something wrong with that. Man, 200 CC, like the first couple, because I've only played, I've played Mario Kart twice now. The first time was on Fucked Up Friday when I was completely shit faced. The second time was in 200 CC, having never played before. And like, if you don't understand how to actually play that game, 200 CC literally just has you riding the wall. Until you hit another uh, wall, uh, and then you just turn and go real fast on that wall, then you hit another wall, and just turn. then there's a slight turn, and you just maybe make it through that without slamming against the wall. So going up against someone like Max and, and Spoonerism, who just play like countless hours, uh, was pretty frustrating. But it was it was all right. It was all right. It's still a pretty good game. No, it's not. It's the fucking worst game ever. It's an all right game. I hate, you know what? Uh, you know, never, you know? All right. All right. Talk uh, about the stupid mod thing that I that I barely know about, but everybody hates. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's pretty cut and paste. Like, uh, they launched paid mods last week. Uh, the internet fucking went bonkers over the, like for lost, good reason. Lost their absolute shit. Uh, and As then, they should have. Uh, Steam was like, "Yeah, I guess we're not going to do that." And then it's they're not doing it. What what is paid mods? I mean, it was, it was like, they, they launched it only, in, in Co, feel free to jump in whenever, they launched it only for Skyrim, uh, and it was like any third-party mods that wanted to uh, go into the paid mod system could throw their mod into the system, and then they would pay X amount of dollars, uh, and the split was that 75% of that went to uh, the developers slash Steam, and the mod person got 25% of all sales, so if it was... Ten dollars, they got two dollars fifty cents, and Steam and the dev uh, Bethesda got seven dollars fifty cents, uh, and I think that was kind of the biggest point of contention for a lot of people with it. That actually, in my opinion, had grounds to be upset with. M means no, no well, okay. free mods. Is that is that the big like the big thing? Like there were no still free mods available. But... Right, right, but like the people who like make really good mods are gonna say like fuck that, throw it in the money pool. Well, yeah. Well, hold yeah, on. Yeah. There there were a ton of reasons that people were angry. Now, hold, let, let, let's start at the beginning here. Okay. The, goal, the idea of paid mods is that someone puts a lot of time in their life into a mod, yep. and they can choose if they want to put a pay barrier in front of it, right? So right. they get some kickback, right? Good concept. I like the idea of mods being funded. Cool. Right. Here's the problem. Everything besides what I just said in Steam's implementation 
was so amazingly horribly thought out and oriented towards Steam and the developer that it's that it never should have been done is so anti-consumer in terms of what it offers. Like it's 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 ludicrous that they even considered doing what they're doing in the way that they did it. Because let me put it this way. A, they had no quality control over the mods that went on it. So what was happening and what actually happened oh, is people fine. would download free oh. mods, rebrand them as their own, and then put it on. And that yeah, happened. It, it turned not in, only worked, it but in some cases were the top selling yeah, mods. It literally turned into the app store on Steam in like seconds. But like, no quality control. Yeah, none. With no, That's, that was the first big problem. QA, yeah. Second ah. of all, the 75% cut. I mean, they were literally people would spend countless hours doing their own stuff, and then they would get 25% 20, of the money that was made for it. Now, I understand the developers needing to cut and stuff, but the fact that that's where they would start, like, they didn't, it, it seems like there was no contact with the community, no public discussion, like, they would start at 25, crazy. Second, But is, but is this, no, like, is this, like, something they wouldn't get money for anyways? Correct. Normally, yeah. normally, if you put something on the Steam Workshop, it's just publicly available. Right. So, so but, and that's true. That's that's okay. what the good the good part is money going to the modder, the people that are making the mods. That's okay. the good part of the whole system. And I'd love to see a system that works, just not this system. Okay. But then and then the part that this is this is the worst part about the whole thing. So they're mods, right? So think about the last time you modded Skyrim or anything, where you were just downloading hundreds of mods, piecing them together to see what worked. There was no support in many cases. You're testing, you're trying, you're experimenting. You now have to buy all those. And what happens if you buy one and it doesn't work? Do you get a refund? Do you like what happens if a game update happens and it breaks the mod? Do you get a refund? Yeah, like there's all these mods is a gray area. It's not any type of official development. What happens if the game updates and 10 mods update to work, but the one you bought didn't? Do you get your money back? And what happens if somebody publicly says, hey, I'm done modding for this. I'm moving on to other projects. If the game updates, it's going to break. Does that mean everyone who bought that mod for that version gets their money back? Like, there's so many things about there's this. There's a lot. It, they literally just flick the switch. Like, let's just, in, Val, in typical Valve fashion, it's like, let's see how this goes. Flip. Oh, my and God. You, <laughs> yeah, but, but they're also like, they're also like going like, oh, everybody hates it. Give me more $100 bills. I need to wipe my tears away. But the, well, uh, there was an article that said, huh? there was an you article that it? said the game, Newell was on. He said that he was literally losing millions and millions of dollars a day just because of the emails that were coming in because of the servers that were having to like support the amount of email coming in literal millions like a day because of this shit. But you don't even think yeah. about that. Like that's fucking crazy. <laughs> but, but again, again, and if yeah, that's and off the part, point, the, but yeah, the, the craziest part about this and, and this is what it, it baffles me. I'm confused. How could no one at Steam have seen this coming <laughs> right. to moderate software with no control, no quality control? Like it, 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 it either means that they did not care mm -hmm. at all about the people that were buying mods or <laughs> they didn't think about anything. Yeah. It's there. How did this happen? Love it. it. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. It, it, to think about how many meetings and all the tech that had to be developed for this and all the stuff that happened, to think that it made it that far is just in, incredible to me. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I will go back and rephrase before people lose their shit. It was uh, a million bucks in just a couple of days. Sorry, not a day, but still. That's fucking crazy for paying for goddamn email servers. <laughs> like, that's still insane. Um, but yeah. No, it's like, it's like going into, it's like <laughs> robbing a bank, going into the bank, robbing it, Getting caught on purpose, and then like, what you you get to keep what you rob the bank, and you have just had to pay a little a percentage of, of what it cost in lawyer fees, but you get to keep the rest. Yeah. Did you, they explain that? Still get arrested and all that kind of shit. It's on your record, but like you get to keep the lion's share of the bank you just robbed. Just out of curiosity, I didn't I didn't read the the some of the details of the final closing article. Are they refunding everyone? I don't know. I, I, you know, I didn't even look into that on, on how that's going to work. To be yeah. honest, like there yeah. is no steam cut there is very, very, there's like three people that run steam customer support. So I don't know how that's going to work, <laughs> how they're going to deal with refunds for that. I'm sure chat will, uh, will tell us here in just a, a couple of seconds. So that is kind of crazy though. 
Yeah. It's the whole thing's crazy. A lot of people uh, are saying in chat, and you're absolutely right. Yes, that's Valve right. refunded everything. Sorry, what were they, they saying? Did, okay. Oh, okay, so never mind then. Good. My analogy does not work then if they refunded all the money. But I mean, and and good on Valve. I would have hoped yeah, they would. I did not have but, the hope, um, so I apologize. That's that's really good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying that they would have done this for money, and you know that's that's true, you know. But it it does definitely throw a wrench in it when they do refund it. It's like if they refund all the money, that's kind of them publicly saying we didn't do this all for the money or we just would have came up with reasons to keep it so in that case it's like it goes back to the first part what were they thinking was going to happen like how did it get through if it wasn't just for the money like yeah. <laughs> so my analogy my analogy then the changes to this walk in rob a bank come out police like freeze and like just kidding yeah, <laughs> we're true. just joking sorry we're kidding we're get away with it here's the money <laughs> rob in the bank i promise that's true. Uh, a lot of people are saying it was Steam wallet refunds, so not actual, not like an so actual cash refund. Easy. Yeah, it's like, that's exactly what it was like working at the pawn shop. It's like, no refunds, you get store credit. Dude, yeah. that's dirt. So it's like the all but the money's already under our umbrella yes, now. It's like, it's like right, right on the back wall. On the, it's like no cash refunds. Yeah, the, the funny, I saw uh, there were some tweets earlier today where a lot of people uh, were saying that they would rather just donate to the modders here start start <laughs> like put your money where your mouth is because you now just you, now, JP, you I just potentially thought of a a great idea for a website think if there was a website it, uh, i think that was Nexus professionally mods run already openly that had just a huge list of content creators for mods of different games that would tell you where that where to go to donate to them I think I Nexus Mods that does that. I, maybe they don't. They might. They might have a donation thing here. If it, anyone out there, anyone out of the sixty-six hundred people out there, if any of you guys know a website that does that, like has lists of where to get mods money if you use their mods, I would like to see that. That'd be that'd be interesting to see. People are saying Nexus does have a donation system. Well, yeah, like like uh, 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 the optional Bandcamp, or I don't know. If okay. It's Bandcamp, right? Like you can go and like you can. Op, yeah. op to pay like suggested payment for this mod would be blank. You can pay whatever you want, kind of a thing. Yeah, so, I always end up, I always end up paying the suggested payment for like albums that I get from from that. I think that would be good. Like suggested payment for this mod, eight bucks. So I and actually, think, Chad just pointed out apparently Nexus Mods, which is where I got most of my stuff, oh, already that, does yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yep. I think okay. you can donate to users on there, and it like I'm looking at the page right now. Here, I could just show this. Uh, do they have it set up like that's what I'm saying? I think they, like this up. is a user. I don't know who this, what this guy does. It, I don't know how I got to this account either. But it literally just has a PayPal button right there. So. Right, cool. but does it? Okay. But it, Bandcamp makes it so much easier because it says this album suggests oh, blank dollars. Right. Yeah. I will say it would know. be nice if before you would download any mod, the author would have an option to have a screen before it that said, hey, I spent a lot of time making this mod. If you'd like, here you can donate to get the mod, or you can just download it here for free. Like, it'd be, it'd be kind of nice to put a step between, because, like, I've used Nexus Mods. I must have missed the donate. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember yeah, it's seeing it. not very that. big, yeah. But if yeah. it would have popped up while I was checking out, and I was like, and it was a mod I really enjoyed, or a big mod, like, a, you know, sometimes they completely remake these games. That's something that, that could definitely... Well, that's why, that's why... That's why fucking museums always have that box right at the door with a suggested oh, in, price. Yeah. A right? suge <laughs> not, not like, give whatever you want. It says suggested price because that's what I, Joe Consumer, who wants to support them, will pay. Right. Oh, and apparently they're doing that now. People good. are telling me, well, damn. Okay, awesome. Great. Good. We're just like five steps behind, but that's okay. That's no, good. I mean, we're talking about it Tuesday after it happens. So. But this is good shit to get out on the table, though, you know, yeah. for people who might not know. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, I, I to my since my Skyrim playthrough like months ago. So, yeah. I kind of want to replay through Skyrim. Anyways, uh, <laughs> break, break Elder Scrolls Six coming out soon, man. You Let's can get do a franchise yeah, playthrough like what? I am. It's coming. What do you mean coming out soon? Well, people are saying Elder Scrolls or Fallout Four, whatever your flavor. Oh, but the it's going to be announced at E3. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, are you going to E3, Co? Dude, is it I up in the air? Trying. I'm trying. I okay. want to go, but they, I mean, it's a process. It, it is. So I'm going to propose this. Zeke, I know you're going. I don't, you can't talk about the means, but I th you're going to go, right? Well, gonna, I'm, Zeke, I'm hosting it. Can, can I be your plus one? Do I get one? Do I, I'll ask if I get a plus one. I don't know one. if you get a plus one. You'd have to ask. No, you can't be a plus one. No, no, I'm, I don't like, want to. I'm, I'm fucking three. I don't want to go. 
I've got a list of like, never go to E3. <laughs> like 20 girls, and then you're like there. You're like underneath all those. There you so go. I'll ask each one of them, and it's a good chance that 0% of them will want to go to with me. Co, here's, but you're after that. Co, here's the proposal. <laughs> if you don't go to E3, I'll get Tally and a bunch of other Twitch broadcasters that don't go, and we'll do a dropped frames after each panel that's streamed at E3. And Boom. then we'll beat Twitch's it. main broadcast in viewership. Get fucking owned. <laughs> 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 that's the dream. I, 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 I believe that basically constituted an official <laughs> announcement, if I'm not mistaken. I, no, I'm I'm totally down for doing that. After every big press conference, you just talk about the con I was already going to do it alone. I'll fucking do it with drop frames. And Zeke can go fucking do whatever he's doing at E3. <laughs> Hell, we'll go up after his panels and start talking about <laughs> Zeke. You, you should be happy for me. We're friends. We're buddies. We're pals. Why so do what, what is start that hurting homeless people to do this shit? Shit on me so hard. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. Uh, with friends like these, you know what? The only person that I can see in this chat right now that's consistently been nice to me is Shannon. Shannon, man, you should see you're the. My uh, only, you're my she, only friend now. Yeah, you gotta see what she says behind your back, man. You gotta be careful. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, uh, but yeah, Co. If you if you don't end up going, I'm gonna do it anyways. I was gonna talk. I, that's why I was asking. Why are you going, JP? That seems kind of like your thing. I fuck. I don't. I'm so done with trade shows. If it's not packed, yeah. like walking okay. around with like a bunch of gross business people that are just wanting to talk about how much stuff they've sold and like units shipped. Flat. That's just not my thing. I have never been there. So I've, I've never it, been to an E3 either. either. I just know everyone that's gone. Every person that I know that goes to E3, they hate it. They hate every. They're all jaded people, and I don't want to be that jaded person because I still. One of my favorite days of the year, every year, is E3 press conference day. It's I wake up and it's Christmas for me. I can sit there in my fucking underwear, watch all these new games, and then I can go get a food down at Jack in a Box, and there's no one else around me. Like that's perfect. I don't want to be in the middle of uh, the middle of everyone else. So yeah. Uh, we need to bring on Omid. We yeah, we do. Break, so we're going to take a break. We'll come back and uh, talk a little bit uh, about kind of the business of Twitch uh, and some other stuff that I think we'll let uh, Omid introduce rather than kind of spill the beans. So we'll be right back, guys. More drop frames coming up right after this. We'll see you in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 